अंतरेश बहिर विदूत तिमिर ज्योतिर्मय शाश्वत स्थान प्राप्य विराजते विनमता अज्ञान मुन्मूल पश्यन विश्व पीत मुल्ल सदीयो विश्व पारे पर तस्म श्रीरवणाय लोकगुर शोक हंत्रे नम Dear brothers and sisters in Sri Bhagwan, on this path to self-realization, this verse is from Ramana Chatwarim Sat, and the meaning is, he is resplendent, having arrived at the eternal status of light, which chases away the darkness inside and outside. he strikes at the root of ignorance of those who bow down to him even when he perceives the universe he is beyond it on its other shore sh- shining salutations to such a one to shri ramana the master of the worlds and the slayer of ignorance and grief today um uh, be very happy to be celebrating the 143rd jayanti of shri bhagwan which also happens to be the centenary celebration of shri ramnashab it's such a good august gathering friends uh, a few days ago we had christmas and uh, so there is a incident uh, mama had uh, said about muruganar and there was a uh, um uh, in december ganeshan uncle uh, chetapa took an, a piece of eggless cake which was presented by a devotee and he went to uh muruganar and uh muruganar on receiving it just started crying with tears of joy and he said ganeshan today you know what it is and uh, chetapa said you know as mama said ramanashramam it's every day is the same so and he didn't know what it was he said today is december 25th and the whole world is celebrating the birth of jesus christ he said one day one day the whole world will be celebrating the birth of our bhagwan will be celebrating and how prophetic you know today you know several miles away i can see it already happening it as he said i won't be around to see it but you know i can see it all happening and uh, so thank you for uh, making the prophecy come true the i want to thank uh, sunita and the uh, the shri ramana marsh heritage for uh, making this happen we uh, celebrated the jayanti in uh, washington dc and it was uh, sponsored by uh, ramana marsh heritage and also arunachal ashram in new york city so we had a great uh, celebration jayanti celebration mama uh, hyderabad kendra is uh, so kendra closest to my father's heart said that's the the center where atma vichara was practiced the most and the bay area is an amazing organization where you have ramana satsang every week rain or shine even on a day when it's pouring cats and dogs we are all gathered here quietly enjoying the umbrella like protection that only bhagwan can give us and uh, today is such a symbolic day the external world is filled with dark clouds with thunder lightning damp and cold compared to the coziness of the inner room the inner hridayam of quietude and bliss bliss the kingdom of heaven has described this satsang is the boat to carry us across the ocean of samsara which it also an association with the wise and with the self and uh, 
Friends, as we know, this path of spirituality, the direct path, is like walking on razor's edge. We need to be a dheeran, a brave, a symbolism of single-pointed, with intense focus, steeled with tremendous patience. Bhagavan's teaching is unique in that it's not a process of learning anything new. It's a process of unlearning. It's a process of forgetting the, the vasanas, the falsehood of the world, which are like dark clouds like today, which cover the sunlight, the bright light inside us of the Atman. Every day we are put to test on a daily basis in the external world. On the paths of bhakti, or the karma yoga, there are others to compare oneself with. We can judge our progress as out how good we are doing. But this is an internal journey where there are no others. This is a path to travel to the Hridayam where there are no one to compare with. And we have to march on slowly, trusting our master. As Mama said, uh, you know, it's a privilege to represent Sri Ramanashramam. And the uniqueness of Ramanashramam is that you have the power of what I humbly think, three, three aspects. One, the holy hill Arunachala, then the living presence of the master, and the fragrance of the sadhana of the devotees, which they have left behind to inspire us on our path to realization. Friends, we lift each other up whenever we fall into samsara. Mama had mentioned about uh, Kavya Kanta in Supri uh, in, uh, on 15th August, uh, 1937, 20 years before independence. Uh, Kavya Kanta asked Bhagawan, what is the supreme goal of a society? And Bhagawan says, Universal brotherhood based on unity, equality. Now, there can be no equality in the external world. It's only, it's only equality in the inner world, in the Kritiya. So even in that, Bhagavan gives us a clue of where, where, where we should be, where the path should be. Our Practice of the direct teachings of Bhagavan, the direct path, is summed beautifully by Arthur Osborne in an editorial ascent, which he describes the, a, po a portion of the Arunachala where it's a steep walk up. So he says where there are no valleys and no uh, rocks to rest, but you just have to keep marching. And where you can see the top very closely from the bottom, but it's very deceptively it's very simple, you know. So, but on the other hand, because there are no stages also in this path of realization, it's just, you know, we, we don't know, but one day we'll all be realized by Bhagavan's grace. Now, this deep path as, a, as compared to the, uh, as opposed to the indirect path, there are no stages as we saw, but where the, the devotees can pick up the fallen and the devotees higher up on the ascent can inspire the people following to that. They can be at that same stage, at a very quick stage. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a pleasurable journey of kinds. So <clears throat> we are celebrating the 100th year of... Uh, Ramanashrama formation, as Mama, uh, you know, described in, in greater detail than what I planned to. But the, the, it, it, on the 19th of May, uh, when Bhagavan's mother attained uh, moksha, nirvana, the next day she was brought down and uh, Pali Tirtam in those days uh, was like a burial ground. And uh, some older devotee, it's the, the least desirable portion of the hill, but which now is the holiest place on the earth. 
so they all came down the ceremony happened and then uh, and uh, they all went up and uh, every day chinna swami gal would come down uh, to to perform the puja and uh, around uh, late november or december uh, you know uh, bhagwan came down and uh, uh, apparently there were uh, some devotees waiting up he said he came down with lunch prepared and he came down and he never went back and when on asked he said did i come here of my own volition not at all it was due to the will of something else so earlier the power of arunachala drew him to tiruvannamalai and now the power of the ambal residing in mathur bhuteshwara must did it sim- similarly now the initial uh, growth of the ashram was uh, it there was only one hut for several months then it became one and then uh, apparently there was three and um, it was and so ramana ashram as mama said was was just a loose organization and then it took structure in 1930 when uh, swami niranjan ananda my great great grandfather uh, great grandfather became the sarvadhikari you could call it a construction boom began buildings started coming around the office the parashala the goshala the halls guest rooms uh, were constructed friends we are celebrating the centenary uh, of the ashram as a symbol of of gratitude to bhagwan for his teachings and i would say it's also a, a way of thanking the wonderful devotees who broke rocks took bricks on their head and constructed the wonderful edifice that we have our home away from home the ashram and just to name a few uh we would uh, name anamale swami kunju swami gal you know how hard they worked to make the buildings appear the the theme is uh, ramanashramam the first 100 years the next 100 years and for eternity and uh, we already have started the celebration it started september 1st in the ashram and uh, it will continue till next jayanti of course every day friends for us is a celebration it's a celebration of our birth in shri bhagwan into the eternal life where scourges of death cannot touch us and moksha is vouchsafed for the true practitioners of self realization excuse me no electrocution not a empty promise that i am throwing out as a snake oil salesman but this these are statements given by our own bhagwan so any word of a gnani has to be true the example he gives you know i have quote a couple of examples one of them being that the true devotee is like a prey trapped in the jaws of the tiger there's no escape then the the other one is when a devotee pleads to bhagwan that you know he is helpless he says your job is to surrender and bhagwan will take care of the rest as he will for us friends we the devotees of shri bhagwan are a different kind of people of than other practitioners of different pay a uh, spiritual path for us the external world holds very little attraction shri bhagwan who's nothing but our own atma pushes us inside from outside and pulls us inside towards the hridayam the heart center the resting place of the atman a true devotee of shri bhagwan like our own prativashan mama is exemplified by a simple demeanor 
with no external display of that tremendous spiritual strength inside. 2002, uh, in Arunachal Ashram after Jayanti, uh, along with uh, Dennis Hartel, who's very close uh, to all of us, we had gone to, there was a chief case called Sri Chinmoy. He was uh, in those days a very uh, popular uh, uh, guru who would fill stadiums. And he had came, come to address the Jayanti and on we had gone to see him out. And he was very emotional. He said, you know, he just addressed as he said, the spiritual strength, the Adhyatmic Shakti in this hall today, several hundred times more than the stadiums that I fill. And he said, don't underestimate it and maintain it, he said. And that, that kind of made a big impression I felt I should share with you. So we're all pretty unique. Please remember that. Now, we are celebrating Bhagwan's Jayanti. Though Bhagwan opposed any celebration connected with him, including the celebration of his Jayanti, one could argue he was never born. But the celebrations were a way for the devotees to show their affection and devotion to him. It was also an occasion for them to strengthen the commitment to practice his teachings with greater intensity. For the highest form of Guru Bhakti, one can show is to practice the Guru's teachings to the dots, to the kamas and dots, you know. Friends, our Bhagawan's life was his teaching. There was no dichotomy between the two. There can be no better practitioner, a living example of self-realization, Atma Vichara. And the other path that he recommended, the one of self-surrender, who can exemplify it better than the 16-year-old boy who gives up everything and surrenders his own self to the will of Arunachala. And Arunachala did take care of him till the end. And that's the same protection offered to all of us. In 1912, uh, when Bhagwan said on Jayanti, and he said, uh, you who intend to celebrate the birthday, first ascertain to whom, whence you were born, the day that we all attain a place in that everlasting life, which is beyond the reach of births and deaths, is our real birthday. So he, he used that opportunity to teach a very Vedantic truth. Now, 20 years later, it took that long for Major Chadwick to come up with a rejoinder. And he said, he wrote a beautiful short poem. He said, you tell me not to celebrate the day I was born. Seeing it led me to thy feet. Why therefore should I mourn? We, friends, we, like Major Chadwick, we celebrate the living presence of Sri Bhagwan. He was not the physical body. He is eternally present in the ashram and everywhere. And there were, as Mama said, there were uh, many devotees whose lives uh, overlapped the physical presence of Bhagwan, and then the sorrow, and then the uh, the the, uh, the presence uh, after after his physical demise. And beautiful books have been, you know, chapters have been written written on that. And the common theme in all of them is that the, His grace, the transmissions of guidance, has not diminished, has not waned, but has, uh, has waxed. And it has only ex increased exponentially. I'll read a, a small passage from an editorial uh, written by Arthur Osman. And uh, it's titled, Bhagwan Lives. Quote, the grace at Arunachala is so potent, so vibrant today, so searching and intimate in its effect that one wonders whether those who find a change in it have been there ever to see. The devotees have found a lightness and a happiness in the very air of Thiruvannamalai 
an immaculate peace beyond the rough handling of destiny and immortal wealth despite their loss. But is the same as actual guidance by Sri Bhagavan? It is. It is, Arthur Osborne says. And it is in the most direct and personal way. Indeed, the guidance seems more active now than formerly in those people who meditated little before, but were contented rather to the sound of his voice to rather feast their eyes upon him and listen to the sound of his voice and are now being drawn more and more to sit in silent meditation before his samadhi and gather in old hall, redolent with his presence. As one sits there, it is nothing vague or diffused that one feels, but the same intense inner stirring, the same lifting up, the same blissful certainty that was felt under his watchful eye. There is the same variation from day to day in mode and potency of guidance. There is the same response to devotion and to any earnest plea for help. Now, the other passage is for people like us. Can this be felt elsewhere? Is Bhagavan's grace just confined to the Ravanamalai? It, was, it never was. His grace flowed out upon all who turned to him. To imply that the guidance was confined to Thiruvannamalai, now or formerly, would be attaching too much attention, importance to the physical body. Now, as formerly, it is felt in the heart of the devotee, the hridayam of the devotee, independent, independent of all other aids. There is a great beauty and potency in a visit to the ashram. Many have compared it to the charging of their spiritual batteries. So friends, today on behalf of the ashram, I invite you all to leave behind your Teslas and its batteries to charge here and you're all welcome to come and charge your spiritual batteries in the peace of Ramana Ashrama. It's a sincere request. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Today we celebrate the birth, the birth of him who is deathless. Bhagavan attached his devotees to not pay importance to his physical body, warning that one day it will disappear. In Bhagavatam, uh, Sri Krishna also similarly advises Uddhava, who was very attached to Krishna's physical beauty, that he is not the physical body and he never was. And he says, you must always remember, friend Uddhava, that whatever is thought by the mind, perceived by the eyes, the ears, and spoken by the tongue is a creation of the mind and senses. You will see the world in your own self and yourself in me, the Supreme Lord. Possessed of this knowledge, you will be immersed in the contentment of self-realization. This is a chapter level of Srimad Bhagavatam, verse 7. This year also happens to be the birth centenary of an exemplary devotee of Sri Bhagavan, Sri Sadhu Om Swamigal. This poet devotee first came to Bhagavan in 1945 and wrote several hundred soul stirring songs on Bhagavan and his teaching. And uh, I'll quote an incident uh, Sadhu Om Swamigal said, which shows his humility. And he said, I'll quote his own words. When people used to say to me, you are lucky because you were with Bhagawan, I would sometimes find some ego rising in me with pride. 
However, by Sri Bhagavan's grace, I thought of a good reply. He says, in a hospital, there is an outpatient department to treat minor cases, but the worst cases are admitted into the inpatient department to be treated under the personal supervision of the doctor. The same happens in this spiritual line. So I am such a helpless case, he says, <laughs> that Bhagavan had to admit me into his inpatient department to treat me under his personal supervision. Those who are not in Bhagavan's physical presence are lucky because they are protected from the delusion of mistaking him to be his body. On Bhagavan's uh, birthday, Jayanti, um, in 1970, he wrote a, a beautiful Tamil poem. It's called Sri Ramana Jayanti Agawal. And uh, it starts Arunachalame Arulame Kundu Gurume Ramanath Tirunamamum Perak. I mean, it's a long one, but I'll just uh, let's give the translation. It says Arunachala itself with grace took birth as Guru Ramana. Who with love destroyed the long time sorrows of those devotees who came to his lotus feet by removing the ignorance of the thickest darkness of hell and showing the incomparable Brahma Shiva state of self-realization. He destroyed the thought of Deham, I am the body idea, that arises due to Chit Jadagranti, the not connecting the consciousness with the body through the method of Naham, Neti Neti, and the self-inquiry of Koham. This arrow aimed at its target results in Soham, I am that state of I, I awareness of pure Brahman. To explain these concepts and living by example, Guru Ramana graciously rose as the son of knowledge. Another uh, uh, small couplet trans translates as, By the grace of the wise Guru Ramana, let all things that happen, happen. To not rise up as I am the body and to be alert is our only duty. From the mountain path, is, uh, uh, I'll read one more song, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, true humble devotee did not uh, mention her name and uh, it reads you who alone know how to love blessed am i to know that you love me you will never forsake me no matter what manner of misfortune befalls me when i am shunned derided cast aside by others you are ever there for folding me in tender protectiveness. When aloneness, fears, doubts, temptation and other foes assail me, you are there to disperse them and put them to flight. You are my true eternal love. In you alone do I find repose. How to thank you, O boundless love. How to thank you, O boundless love, by offering something to you that you do not have my mind so <laughs> now coming to some administrative uh, thing um, friends uh, i want to uh, uh, you the the organization ramanashramam is only as strong as the sum of its parts and we have the the best devotees and uh, i feel it's my duty to periodically inform you what is going on. So I'd like to um, let you explain, uh, I mean, uh, inform you the activities that we have started and will continue as a part of uh, gratitude to Bhagawan and to strengthen the association of the devotees with the institution. And uh, this will be, this will come under the, uh, uh, the birth centenary of the ashram. As we know, publications are a very, very important uh, thing. And there have been so many books written in so many world languages and Indian languages. 
and which are out of print and we're going to try to bring them uh, into the, the light of the world both as a uh, most of them any new book will be brought out as an electronic edition and then uh, and if it cannot be uh, printed it will be digitally scanned on the website for people to read and uh, we'll we'll try the you know as you know the who am i in various languages uh, the latest one was in urdu uh, it will be available for free download everywhere and uh, we will continue to have the celebrations of the jayanti i mean the centenary through various functions all over in all over india also in north america and which will be coordinated under the umbrella of shri ramana maharshi heritage and uh, all over the world you know already centers in australia uh, mauritius have express intent and uh, i i'll as your representative i'll try to be there uh, in person and um, it will be my honor to 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 enjoy this most wonderful part of my job is to be with bhagwan's children as we all devotees and uh, as we know recently we had uh, two such functions one in with arunachala ashrama in new york and one in washington dc which was coordinated under the uh, ramshi ramana maharshi heritage it was a real real wonderful happy celebration and the uh, devotees were really happy and uh, as a part of my job i get reports and it really is uh, uh, brings tears to my eyes to see very very people of very poor means in rural villages celebrate bhagwan's functions with such intensity you know in tamil nadu kerala andhra pradesh and it's really wonderful great gratifying to see bhagwan swanubhuti spread everywhere it cuts through every strata of learning economic disparity it's really really it's, a, it's an honor it's an honor and um and uh, to also part is uh, there is a center in uh, um, tamil nadu called rajapalayam and they uh, have planned to distribute aksharana malai books to 1.5 lakh children and whole of southern tamil nadu will be through the medium of schools teachers will be exposed to this beauty this adhyatmic teaching and uh, and uh, of course chennai kendra is also actively uh, doing uh, this the next step and of course uh, being how can it be the bay area the the area of digital experience so i'm very glad to say that in, you must have seen the apps we have a, a daily parayana app and we're trying to it's it's uh, the ashram uh, evening parayana has been bought out in both media and we're also going to bring out a telugu and uh, sanskrit version of that and hindi so people can follow bhagwan's uh, original uh, compositions in the their mother tongue so to say we must have also have seen the mountain path app where you can get the free downloads of the mountain path the along with it the sharanagati monthly magazine and the maharshi magazine brought out by arunachal ashrama the and uh, we'll try to work towards one common app this is for the uh, techies here and uh, in the, you would also be seeing through uh, the youtube we are able to get the daily transmission live transmission of the evening parayana and uh, on january 7th i'll uh, um, welcome you to watch the ashram jayanti celebrations live and uh, and uh, please uh, if you have already haven't done uh, there is a, a beautiful video uh, comes from the ashram through uh, our own tyagu it's called in focus just brings out the atmosphere of ashram so beautifully so intimately you can always feel it in your uh, living room so please do that and uh, 
we also uh, have to thank uh, an artificial in ai engineer manikandan of uh, metras kendra for his wonderful work uh, towards the creation of the app um friends uh, we know uh, 2014 when i was here we we started the facebook page of the uh, ashram this is said at that time i said there was a goal to using uh, professor swaminathan's words that uh, a, a million eyes you know should uh, get the beauty of bhagwan's beautiful uh, you know divine transmission so and uh, since then we have grown and uh, now we have facebook pages in english hindi tamil telugu gujarati marathi malayalam kannada spanish and shek there used to be a russian page and you know why it's not there and uh, and now we have around 1.8 million followers so it's it's been just a uh, it's a miracle to see how we just that people are uh, just getting the beauty of bhagwan's uh, uh, you know divine face at least through the app and uh, a few years ago somebody an arabic gentleman had translated arthur osborne's uh, book ramana maharshi and the path of self knowledge into arabic language now how am i going to take those books and go to these countries so we put it on the facebook and there were 370 downloads of this book in countries like saudi arabia iraq iran turkey you name it i mean just and there are so seekers everywhere that's our humbling uh, thing that you know this is not you know just exclusive to us there are people all over the world seeking searching for truth and what better way to get bhagwan into their lives through a digital way now uh the next step is of course we there are going to be new more get new guest rooms uh, 51 new rooms have been planned and next time you are there please i will please enjoy the thing and uh, so definitely by next october we should have 51 and um, including one you know the we you know the tnk you know dr tnk um, and those uh, i think grandson or great grandson yes. grandson so if he's here i mean i like him to know that that will be um, a new building will come there just in honor in honor of his grandfather where muruganar kanakama now will have lived in so that's it's a beautiful holy place we are going to come out with uh, souvenirs and uh, there is going to be a souvenir and uh, which uh, with our dr ramohan uh, the retired railway you know he is going to be the editor and uh, that will come out a beautiful pictorial uh, souvenir uh, by dev guga you know if you if you have not seen his photographs you should see it just brings arunachala in almost three dimension you know beauty so he is coming out with pictorial uh, like a coffee book and of the of the hill end of uh, the ashram the hindu newspaper of tamil nadu is uh, they brought out a pictorial uh, book on bhagwan which got sold out and they coming out with second edition which they'll have more articles on the so uh, the centenary so okay. glad to do now coming to green initiatives or esg as a call uh, what better uh, exemplar example can be of green than our bhagwan such a minimalistic person who use so little and the ashram has to do it and uh, the more new trees are being planted and as you know the hill is greener now than it has ever been and i can very proudly say that one could uh, almost walk up to skandashram with a green cover you know so thanks to some of the uh, devotees and uh, the ashram workers so we're going to have more trees and in, you would notice even inside the ashram there are more uh, trees and there are going to be benches put all over you know so that somebody can sit and quietly meditate everywhere and uh, recently uh, i was very gratified one uh, a couple of school college students came and said 
this is the place where they can quietly revise their uh, study material before they go to because the ashram is almost the green lung of of the place and sad you know i'm happy to say it but also sad to say that you know so but but at least they can quietly uh, you know get the shade and the uh, you know and the quietitude to to you know learn in peace there is a, uh, we were able to revive an ancient uh, temple called pandava tirtham recently there was just it's right behind sheshadri ashram it was a the puranas would say that the pandavas were there a beautiful lake so please say you know manichitapa had uh, done some thing a few years ago but again it had fallen in the town and we were able to do the a formal thing including the temple and there was a um kumbhabishekam performed and it will be maintained by the local people there and that's such a gratifying these are uh, people who live in the in the hill uh, footsteps and they are going to maintain it but they said any ashram devotees can use it for their sadhana and they'll be very glad to show it around so please uh, next time when you're there please check it out we you know friends uh, many of you have uh, volunteered in the narayana seva the ashram and uh, it just continues to grow and uh, we also uh, the narayana seva scope has been increased you know to to include uh, 400 to 500 meals to the local hospital for uh, relatives or patients because they have no uh, hygienic food sources close by this uh, during the pandemic one would say it was almost the source of nutrition for many devotees who were uh, including some westerners who were uh, uh, couldn't leave the country so that's a quality and really that continues to grow this is all thanks to the generosity of all of you with your donations and thank you and um, and as sunita said that my vasana previously was that of a doctor and how can i not mention about that so the ashram dispensary and uh, it was started during bhagwan's time that is going through a major expansion i would say over eight full time doctors are there and uh, we are going to expand the next building also it's going to undergo thing and uh, over 200 patients are given 90 day free medicines and uh, i'm excited to say that we have developed uh, 18 different medicines medicines which uh, some of them which cost 20 dollars a day here are given to poor patients for free 90 day supply they undergo a free lab work we are able to get medical camps from cardiologists from chennai uh, i free eye camps and free eye surgeries patients are taken to Coimbatore operated and sent back by free. Then there are uh, acupuncture, uh, Ayurveda camps. So it, it just just continues to uh, gently grow, and it's it's uh, so nice. And uh, more importantly, we've been able to get a uh, develop protocols of a low cost treatment, especially of diabetes, high blood pressure, and I could say the poor patients are almost getting the same care that one. you would get here and it's such it's just a proof of bhagwan's grace lastly i would uh, the library uh, and again i hope you all have uh, used it there are over 40000 spiritual books and some of them are uh, getting worn out with use and we're going to replace them and uh, so i have given you that and uh, to again uh, use a uh, bay area technology we are all nothing and and again uh, before that i would say not a blade of grass moves without bhagwan's will and none of us none of us ever think that we are doing it we are, our job in the administration is not to just stand in the way of bhagwan's grace flowing that is the role that we play and uh, i'd like to conclude by saying that you know we are nothing but hardware guys uh, apologies to all the hardware engineers we just support the most wonderful software the most wonderful software 
which is unique for every individual. That is our Bhagwan's unique teaching. We just are trying to probably channelize that energy and make it available everywhere. And the software does the rest. And that is just our role, you know. So, Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramanaya. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity.